All right, off we go. So uh, a lot of material to cover. I want to finish 5-8 with you and 10-2, which is a big section. So we better dive in. We're looking for an exam week after next, huh? Practice exam next week, next Wednesday, no, next Thursday, <laughs> and the exam the Tuesday after. All right. Uh, population of a southern city follows the exponential law. What are they talking about? What is the exponential law? What formula are we going to use on every problem, well, almost every problem, in this section, when they don't give us another formula? PERT. I don't know if I've said that very clearly, so let me say it now. So A equals PERT. So we will use PERT. That's what they mean by exponential law. Other times they'll call it the um, law of uninhibited growth or something like that. Anyway, it's the PERT. It's the same financial formula. It's the continuous growth financial formula. Did you guys finish the 5.7 financial problems? Remember, we have the two formulas, so it's the PERT one. So in this section with population growth, these are all you know exponential growth and decay, um, it's always going to be the continuous, because that's how populations grow, right? They grow continuously. They don't just grow once a year or something like that, right? It's continuous compounding growth or decay for compounds decay. Okay, so um, exponential law, if the population doubled in size over 14 months. Now, let me, let me try to be helpful and clear. That is my job. Um, it, when they don't give you the R, no R given, you must first find R. So if they don't give you the rate, do you know what I mean? If they don't say the, the rate is this, if they don't say that, then you've got to first find R and then second finish the problem. Did I mention that last time, like a two-phase deal? Or maybe I didn't. Did I? Okay, did we start? So that's what I'm talking about again is the two-phase deal. Whenever they don't give you the R. So these exponential growth and decay problems, you'll see a couple of them on the practice exam, the real exam, and in the homework course. If they don't give you R, first you got to find R, so and then second finish the problem. So let's um, let's find R. How do we do that? Well, all all we actually need is this information. I don't even need to read any more right now. Just that information enough uh, alone is enough to find R. Population doubles in 14 months. So what does that mean about A? What's the amount of money or the amount of population later? 2P. Samuel's got it. It's double, huh? It's double. So that makes sense? Just like doubling money, it's doubling population, huh? Is that good? And we just leave this P. The P's are going to drop out in a minute by dividing anyway, right? What's the R? I don't know. That's what I'm looking for. And what's the T? That's the 14 months. Yeah, that's the T is 14. By the way, that means I'm using months. So when I get here to the second part in that five years, I'll have to convert to months at that time. Because you've got to be all in the same time unit everywhere. Either You could do it all in years if you wanted, or you could do it all in months. It doesn't matter, but you have to be consistent whatever time unit you use, right? So since we, I, I'm using 14 as months, and when I get to the five years, I'll have to change that to what? 5 times 12 is 60, 60 months at that point. Anyway, we're not there yet. All I, right now, all I do, I'm in the first phase right here, right now. First, I'm going to do what? Find R, right? Because that's what you do first when they don't give you R. So I'm not even going to think about the five. That'll be later. That'll be when I do the second and I finish the problem after I've got my hands on R. Okay, so how do I solve this PERT equation now for R? You know I just divide off that P right away, huh? Boom, boom. So we have 2 is e to the R times 14. Trying to solve for the R, what should I do now to solve for R? Hasn't Hitler climbed into power? Right, the letters up in the the letters up in the power zone. So L in, huh? Got to get him out of power. The sniper. Here we go. So the so the power falls down. Okay, so now let's 
bring this over here. So now we have ln2 is r times 14 ln e. We good to there. That whole power, it, it brings the whole power down, right? And then the ln e is just 1, so we can ignore that. How do we finish solving for r? Just divide by that 14, right? So r is ln2 over 14. We good there? So we got R. That's the first, that's the first thing. Got R, which is ln2 over 14. Now, second, second, we go on and try to finish the problem. What do I mean finish? Well, you go, you go again, you start over again with the pert. You just keep using the pert. You know, that's the equation for this whole section. That's how populations grow and um, substances decay continuously. They don't take a break, right? Populations and substances don't, don't just compound once a month or something. They continuously grow or decay. So we use the PERT, the continuous financial one. So now we plug in our R. Now we have R, ln2 over 14. Put that in for R. That good? So then we get A is P, E to the R. What's R? ln2 over 14 times T. Everybody good to there? See how I put the R in right there? And the PERT. And remember what we learned happens. You guys okay with this next little maneuver? Remember what we learned happens when you have an E and an LN? They cancel, but be real careful. Oh, in years past, this has been very confusing for students, so I want to go slow here and be really clear. The E and the LN cancel. So the thing, in, it's, it's like if I took my toaster and just canceled it. I don't know how you'd cancel a toaster. But then the toast would just fall, and it had toast in there. It would just fall to the counter, right? So that's what's going to happen with the two. He's in the toaster, but the 14 is not. He's not in the LN, notice, right? He's just under it. So the T and the 14, they're not, they're not dropping down to the counter. They were never in the toaster. They were never plugged into the natural log, but the two is. So when the E and the LN cancel, Who's dropping down? Just the 2. What about the T and the 14? They stay up in the power zone, T over 14, right where they were. They don't go anywhere. They were never in the LN. Does everybody see that? See how it's just the 2 that drops down? So T over 14 is still in the power zone where it's always been. Good? Okay, now what's the P? Now, now we can do the P, the principal, like the first amount of money put in. It's not money, though. It's... Population, what was the first population? 40, yeah, they tell us, yeah, right here, 40,000. I didn't read it even. Current population, 40,000. Yeah, that's like the starting, and then they're going to say, how much five years from now? So starting investment, starting population, same thing. So 40,000 times 2, a little crammed in there, 2 t to the 14th. I mean, <laughs> times 2 to the t over 14. Good to there? Is that good? So now we can finish the problem. How do we finish? They're saying five years from now. Five years is, as you know, 60 months. Isn't it? Five years is 60 months. Put in 60 right there for T. And hit the buttons on your calculator. Is that good? So we'll get... 40,000 times 2 to 60 over 14. Oops, can you see that? That little thing's in the way. So it's 40,000 times 2 to the 60 over 14. Oh, I didn't bring my calculator. Somebody have that? On that, we good? We got that? Somebody's got that? All right, I'll go, I'll go grab it. Alright, 40,000 
times 2 to the power 60 over 14. I'm getting 78, 780, 168. 780, 168. Do they want you to round? Round to a whole, no, whole, a whole person. So 69, it'll round to 69. There we go. Is that good on that question? Anything else I can answer on that one? Yeah, so it make, does it make sense the two phase? I think if you kind of get the rhythm, they're kind of the same all, all the time. When they don't give you the R, it's always two phases. You start with the PERT, you put in the 2P in the 14 months, and you find R, which is LN2 over 14. Then you start the PERT again. See how it's two phases? You do PERT once, get R, and then do PERT again, and, plug, and now put in your R and put in your final information, which is your 60 months. See how it's in two phases? First phase, you use the PERT to get R. Second phase, you do PERT again and plug in R and finish up. We have a lot of these on the exam? A couple, yeah. Yeah, so you can do them. Just, you just got to practice. Just go over it and over Just do these again and again. It'll be, just, it'll be just like this. You know, it won't be anything different. All right, so the half-life of radium is 1690 years. If 50 grams are present now, how much will be present in 160 years? Have we done a half-life problem? I can't remember. No? First one? Okay, what does half-life mean? If I say the half-life of this radium is 1690 years, what does that mean? Yeah, half's gone after 1690 years. It just means what it says, huh? Half-life is how long, how long until half, half remains, half is gone, however you want to say that. How long until there's half left. So in other words, if you take this clump of radium, put it on your counter, probably not a good idea, and just let it sit there, after 1,690 years, half of it will have dissipated into the atmosphere. Right? It'll be half gone. So it kind of goes away slowly. So, okay. So when they give me that, and 50 grams are now, how much in 160 years? So first question, are they giving you R anywhere? No. So no R given, at least not explicitly given, right? They don't say R is 17 or something, you know. So what do you do when they don't give you R? Which equation are we going to use? The PERT. It's the PERT every time. And I told you, right, that math Excel uses a P equals P0E to the KT, I believe. If you click on the Show Me an Example button, that's fine. You could use that. That's the same thing. They're just using different letters, but it's the same format. That's totally fine. I just thought I would keep using the same formula that we did for the financial problems. That way it might be easier for you. Either way is fine, though. So uh, use the PERT formula, and you know what we do first? First, we have to find R, right? So go ahead. Can you do that? First, find R. So do the steps to plug in for R. And then once you get R, start the PERT formula again, and the second time, finish up in two phases. Okay, so the last problem talked about how long until a population doubles. This is talking about how long until a compound has half as, as much there. So instead of making the amount later become twice the population, 2P, we're going to make it become half as much as it originally was there, right? So what am I going to put for A? Not 2P, but what? Half P or 0.5P, right? Either one's fine. Does that make sense? That's what we do for half-life, right? Because half of it will be left. And, and what's the time for that? 1690 years. See how it's just very, very similar to the last problem? Instead of whatever it was, 14 months to be double population, it's 1690 years to be half population, right? To be 0.5. See how these are kind of the same thing every time? After you've done a few of them, you can kind of get the rhythm. You can put one example right in your 3x5 card. You know, they're kind of the same every time. Just follow that plan. You know the deal now? Let's solve for R. So divide off the P. And we have 0.5 is E to the R times 1690. What do we do to get R? Hitler's in power, the letter's in power. You know the deal. L in, L in, power comes down. So we get L in of 0.5 is R times 1690. L and E, and of course L and E is 1. 
So how do we finish solving for R? Divide by the 1690. See how it's so, so similar? Boom, we got R. Bring it on up here. Now it's second, second part, second phase, right? Again, we start with the PERT, but now we know what R is, huh? And we put in the R. The R is LN.5 over 1690, and then the T. Let me give you um, something that might help. On a half-life problem, for half-life, R, if you want to skip part one, R will always be LN of 0.5, because that's the half, over the half-life, which is the 1690, huh? See how R came out to be, R came out to be LN of 0.5, the half, over, whoops, I forgot my zero, 1690, over 1690. It'll always be that. So if you get a half-life problem and you want to just skip phase one, you can. You can just jump right to here. R will always be the LN of 0.5 over the half-life every time. But they're not all half-life problems, and they can give us other tricks, right? I remember trying to help my daughters a year ago or a year and a half or something take pre -cal They were taking Mr. Jameson for pre calculus here on campus, and I was helping. They were both taking it together. Helping them get ready. We're doing half-life problems. And I went, there was a whole bunch of them in a row. And I'm like, girls, 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 let me just give you a shortcut. Just, just do this for the half-life. Just, just jump right to the R. It's just always going to be LN.5 over half-life. And I remember my younger daughter saying, Dad, is that really, is that, he's not going to change it up, right? You can, we can always use that. And I'm like, oh, yeah. On this practice exam, they were all that way. I'm sure that's fine. She said, no, Dad, you better show me that, the actual derivative. How you? I'm like, no, no, no. We, I was late. I was tired. I'm like, hey, that'll be fine. Then they took the test, and he gave them a different kind of question. She was very mad at me. But anyway, that, that was good for her. So anyway, yeah, so, so that's only if they give you direct half-life. Mr. Jameson was more tricky than that. So, so, um, so watch out. So it's just if they give you half-life that you can use that. Okay, so um, now... How do we, we can finish the problem now, right? Do we know the, uh, what's the P? What's 50. the, um, yeah, 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 that's the 50, 50 grams present now. That's the amount put in the bank now or put on the counter now. Uh, and you know the E and the LN cancel, right? And the, what's in the toaster drops to the counter. That's the 0.5. But the T and the 1690 stay where they're at, huh? Can't you, can you, once you see this right away, can't you just, will they almost always be like that? Yeah, you're right. Half-life problems always jump down to with a 0.5 in the base and the T over the half-life right here. Yep. Yeah, that's true. For half-life. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly where I had my daughters go to. But it's only true for half-life. And if they change something up, you got to... Well, and I'll show you what I mean. Well, I, I promise nothing different than it's in the homework. And I'll show you. So I'll show you what else is in the homework. They do change it a little bit. And I'll show you how to do this. Yeah, no, nothing, no new curveballs all of a sudden on the test. Ha-ha, try this one. No, I won't do that. Um, I, um, all right, so now, last thing, plug in the time, 160 years, boom, right there, 50.5, 160 over 1690, like this, right? Yeah, and I just hit the buttons on the calculator. So, what is it? 46.8 or 9, however, oh, th they want three places, 1,000? Three places? Oh, yeah, 46.824. So 824, yeah. Is that good? Other people getting that? All right, there we go. Questions I can answer on that? Making sense? See how these are kind of the same every time? Population doubles, half-life, it's how long till half. Phase one, find R. Phase two, finish, you know, PERT in both cases. Phase one with the PERT, find R. Phase two with the PERT, finish up. Good? So you ready for the curveballs? Okay, so here we go again. Half-life of carbon-14, 5,600 years. So what, what did I tell you you could do automatically for a half-life problem? So that, yeah, the half-life, you can just say R is going to be LN of point. Put that right on your 3x5 card. LN of point 0.5 over the half-life thing. So that's going to be LN point 0.5. What's the half-life? 5,600 LN.5 over 5,600. Good. So I can skip phase one. That is what we would get out of phase one. Good. So I'll write A equals PERT. I'm just going to go right to phase two. 
Um, the E, I'm sorry, the R is ln 0.5 over 5600T. Good to there. If I just skipped phase one, I know what R is going to be on a half-life problem. It's ln of 0.5 over, 50, over the half-life time, 5600. Okay, and so now, well, you know what to do from here. The E and the LN cancel, and what was in the toaster falls to the counter, the, the 0 0.5. So this will be A is P 0 0.5 to the T over 5600. And like Mando was saying, you could have really just jumped right to here. I mean, it's always going to be that way on a half-life. It's going to be 0 0.5 in the base, time over the half-life time in the power, always. Okay, anyway, now let's finish the question. So now we're ready to finish. I'll, Phase one's over. Let's wrap it up. What, what else are they saying? A uh, piece of charcoal made from wood of a tree shows only 67% of the carbon-14 expected in living matter. So um, this is how they carbon... This is carbon dating right here. So what that means, how, how it generally works... I'm no chemist, but I, I know a little bit. There's basically two kinds of carbon in living matter, and one kind of carbon stays... With, doesn't decay, or not very fast at all pretty much stays. The other, the carbon-14 decays slowly over time. So we can use that like a time clock because we know how long it takes carbon-14 to decay. So when they find a dead animal or a, a dead tree, you know, that's been burned, um, then they can, they can measure how, how much the carbon-14 is that's left and they know how long it's been decaying because they compare to the other carbon-14 and they know how much there was originally because the other one doesn't decay. They know how much there was originally. Then they find out how much carbon-14 is left. They know how much it's decayed. They can do this like a time clock to find out how or when the thing died when the carbon-14 first began decaying. That's, that's how it generally works. Now, there's, like any science rule, there's assumptions, right? They're assuming that the rate of decay is, is continuous, that there's nothing weird that throws it off. So there's assumptions. There's always assumptions. But assuming that's all true, then this will be a um, time clock. Okay, so 67%. It, 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 there's only 67% left. Are you catching their words there? 67% of it is left, right? They found this piece of charcoal, this burned wood, and they said, hey, it's only, it's lost some of its carbon-14. It's begun decaying. It's only got 67% of its carbon-14 left. How old is it? How long ago did it die and the carbon-14 begin decaying? How are we going to do that? What am I going to do? So if they told me it only had 50% left, I would say the amount is 0.50p or 0.5p. Right? If they told me an investment doubled, I would say the amount is 2p. So if they tell me there's 67% left, I say the amount is 0.67p. Exactly. Does that make sense? That's just how much is left in the account. It's just 67% of times the original principal the original amount of carbon-14. Is that good? Because remember, times means of in math. Whenever you say of, 67% of the original is left. 67% times the original is what's left. Of means times. So there we go. And so now we just uh, drop the P out of both sides. So this is the curveball. So you okay with the curveball? The rest is regular now. So that's 67%. It's a little different than we're used to. So I drop the P out of both sides. And now I have, bring it up here, 0.67 equals 0.5 to the T over 5,600. Good there? Now, um, Hitler's climbed into power. You know the drill. I'm trying to solve for time. Right, how old this thing is, the time clock, the time. L in on both sides. Hitler comes out of power. T over 5,600 times the LN of 0.5. LN of 0.67. We good to there? Got the T out of power. Got it down to the front with the LN. And now we just have to solve. How do we do that? Well, two steps probably. Divide by the LN 0.5 first off. Yeah. And that gets rid of that. And then we have T over 5600. And then, last step to get um, T alone, multiply by 5600. 
Kind of running out of room here. Multiply by 5600. So use your calculator. Take ln.67 times 5600 divided by ln.5. 2.6. They said nearest whole number, so let's round to 2433. Mm -hmm. 2433. That's how many years old, so many years ago the tree died and began carbon 14 decay. Other people getting that answer? We'll assume Mando's right. He's usually right. Good on that. Questions? That looks that answer looks reasonable. Questions I can answer on that? So you, you okay? The only curveball is the point sixty seven, right? The rest of the problem is really normal. The only curveball is the point sixty seven. So could you handle that curveball on the test? Mm -hmm. I promise I won't I won't throw a new pitch. It'll be one of these. Or two of these, probably. All right. So, okay, under uh, certain water conditions, the free chlorine, swimming pool, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Just grab the numbers. Uh, there's 2.9 of this chlorine stuff. 24 hours later, there's our time element. Right, because of all these problems, we have something that starts and then it grows or it shrinks over time. I mean, that's all that's happening, right? Initial amount grows or shrinks, growth or decay over time. You know the equation. It's pert, right? It's always pert. So, so it was 2.9, 24 hours later, blah, 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 it went down to 2.6. See, that's all that matters. They're saying, hey, it was 2.9, 24 hours later, it was 2.6. What's it going to be three days after three days? So... And then they have another question as well. But anyway, we know the drill. What do you, let, me, let me let you start. Let, let me make, let you do the first, the first step on this one. So what do we do first on this one? What do we got to do first? To get what? What's our goal in phase one? R. R. Everybody good with that? Just wanted to make sure you're good with that. We got to get R, don't we? Because they didn't give us R. I don't see R anywhere, so it's the same deal as always. It's not a half-life, so we can't just like automatically know what it is. So, for, you know, so first... Find R, right? That's always our first goal. When we don't have R, we got to find R. How do you do that? Well, you plug in. It started at 2.9, so the amount started at 2.9. That's the principal. That's like the money you put in the bank at first. And then later, 24 hours later, the amount became 2.6. Good there? So that's what they always see how predictable this is. They give me a starting amount, which is P, and then an amount later, right? Like double population, half amount there, 67% is left later. See, that's the same thing every time, just a starting amount, amount later. So the starting amount is 2.9, and then it decayed, it went away, it went down to 2.6. The chlorine in the pool kind of went away after a while. All right, and then how long did that take? 24 hours. See how the time is 24? We okay with that? Is that making sense? And so you know what we do? Phase one, we solve for R. And then we start over phase two with PERT again, and then we can answer the questions. So let's do that. Let's solve for R. Divide by 2.9 on both sides. So we get E to the R times 24. Here, let me. And this other side, this 2.6 over 2.9, I'm just going to leave it that way, I, unless it's clean. Is it nice? Probably not. Nah, I don't know what it is. No, it's something ugly. I'm just going to leave it that way. So E to the R times 24, good to there. And then Hitler's in power, R's in power. So you know the drill, LN, both sides. The power comes down. All right, so what do we got? We've got LN of 2.6 over 2.9 is R times 24 LNE, which is 1. Everybody good to there? Mm -hmm. 
Does that make sense? The power came down. Last step to get our loan is? By the 24. Boom, there's R. That's kind of a mess, huh? I was going to leave it that way. So there's R. So now what do we do? Now phase two, part two, what do we do? We write PERT again, don't we? But now we stick in our R. What is our R? I'm going to run out of room here. Let me squeeze this up. Now R is LN 2.6 over 2.9 over 24 all to the T. Is that okay there? See how the R is all that stuff? L in 2.6 over 2.9, and that's all over 24? Mm -hmm. Is that okay? And then remember what happens? The E and the L in cancel, and what was plugged into the toaster drops to the counter, the 2.6 over 2.9. That was plugged into the L in machine all along, wasn't it? So that's the toast. That's what's going to hit the counter when the toaster goes away. So we're going to have A is P, and the 2.6 over 2.9 will be the base to the power T over 24, right? Because the T over 24 was never in the toaster. So that's going to stay where it's at. Good to there. Now, we're in position to answer any questions they want to ask us, because we've got the formula, don't we? So what do they want to ask us? What will be the reading after three days? That is, 72 hours. So I just plug in 72, don't I? Just plug in 72. Oh, and what's P? What's the original? What was it originally? 2.9, right? The P is 2.9 still. That was the original reading. One day later, it was down to 2.6. We want to know what's it going to be three days later. Does that make sense? What we're doing? They're saying it started at 2.9. The chlorine's going down over time. It went down to 2.6 after one day. What will it be after three days, 72 hours? So let me go to a fresh screen, and I'm going to use that formula. So same formula. So I've got A equals P. Oh, and the base now is... I forget, was it 2.6 over 2.9 to the T over 24. And the P, we now know, is the 2.9. I'll just put that right in the front. We good like that? So there's our formula. Let's answer the question, what about after 72 hours? Put in time 72 hours. And we get 2.9 times 2.6 over 2.9 to the 72 over 24. That's 3, isn't it? Isn't 72 over 24 just 3? So that would be 2.6 over 2.9 to the power of 3. I'm getting... Two point, remember, it should be going down, right? Remember, the amount of chlorine is decaying over time. 2.08, they, th they want what, 100? Two places. 2.089, so we'll round that to 2.09. So the reading is down to 2.09. It's getting less and less over time. Chlorine has gone down. 2.09. Is that good? And then their final question, when will the chlorine reach 1.0? At that point, he must shock the pool again. When will it reach 1.0? So let's use this formula again. See, that formula we got is, is going to continue to be the formula we use. So let's use that formula again, which is A equals 2.9, 2.6 over 2.9, to the T over 24. Just keep using that formula. So when will it be 1.0? What do I do with that 1.0? So there's two questions. So we answered the first question. 
The next question is, when will it be 1.0? What do I do to answer that? Put that in for the amount, right? You with me? How we doing? So they're saying, when will the amount of chlorine be 1.0? So I got to put in A is 1.0, and I got to solve that for A. I mean, for a T. You're asking when. So I'm going to solve that for t. How do you solve that equation for t? It's not easy. This is challenging, huh? This is pre-calculus. This isn't meant to be easy. So what do we do? How do we solve for t there? What should I do first? So divide by that 2.9, right? Yes. Get that out of there. So that's just 1 over 2.9 equals 2.6 over 2.9 to the t over 24. Good so far. 1.0 is just 1, right? We good to there? Uh-huh. How are we doing? Well, you guys well, tired of this problem yet? Hitler in power, so. Right. L in both sides, right? I'm going to go to fresh screen one more time. It's a long problem. This keeps going and going. So where were we? We had... 1 over 2.9, okay, equals 2.6 over 2.9 to the t over 24. That's a 24. Everybody got that all copied down? Is that okay? All right, I better get to the other screen. Okay, so yeah, so you got Hitler in power. The letter's up in the power zone. L in both sides. The power comes down. T over 24 times L in. 2.6 over 2.9, L in a 1 over 2.9. What do we do to solve for T? Divide by that whole L in thing. Divide by L in of 2.6 over 2.9, L in of 2.6 over 2.9. Whew, this thing will never end. L in a 1 over 2.9 over L in of 2.6 over 2.9 is t over 24. Last step to solve for t? Times, Times the 24. It, boom. There it is. Hit the buttons on your calculator. I need to move on to another problem. Is that good? That's all, is that awful? <laughs> so that's fair game. The homework is fair game. So practice it. You can do it, but it will not come to the casual. It will come to those who spend their life practicing it. That's, that is what I did. Right? Those rumors that you either know math or you don't, it's just boom, you just wake up in the morning and there's the math, are, is false. It's not true. And I'm a math person, right? I'm telling you, I had to work like a dog. I had to do, it was my life. Math, these kind of classes were my life. Night and day, night and day. Doing the homework, doing the homework, doing the homework. Go see my teacher when I didn't understand something. So I encourage you, if you want to do well, if you want to go the math science road, you can do it, but it will take your life. You've got to give it your life. It won't take less, especially calculus. Calculus is quite a bit harder. So if you want to go that way, I just want to be straight with you, that is what it takes. You can do it if you want to do it. They're being a little more realistic on this one is what they're doing. So on uh, number eight here, so they're, they're talking about what's called a logistic growth model. Remember how we talked about the rabbits in the field and, you know, if there's no predator and there's plenty of food in space, they'll just grow uncontrollably, as we've seen in history. That's happened a few times. Anyway... Um, but in real life, there usually, is, there usually are predators, and there's a limited space and a limited food supply. So populations do not grow uncontrolled or uninhibited, as they call it. Instead, they grow like something like this. This is more realistic. It's called logistic growth model. It, it, it limits it. So anyway, uh, we don't have to do a lot. Well, there are three questions. Eight, nine, and ten are all about it. Let me show you what, what it basically says. First off, it's going to ask you these kind of questions. It's saying, what what is the carrying capacity? Well, that's just the number at the top. Whatever number, so I'm just going to point out the different things. That number at the top is called the carrying capacity. What that means is when they set up a model, remember, remember math is made up. Remember, math is completely made up to describe things that are real. So real life biologists look at populations of insects and rabbits and whatever, 
and you know trees and things like that and they watch how they grow and fall over time and all that kind of stuff and they make up math equations that fit the reality that they see in the real world well these are the equations that best fit how things grow when they are limited with predators and space and food and and the number on the top is what where you put the carrying capacity so if you find a certain environment and you say hey in this forest, there's enough room, or in this field, there's enough room for 1,000 rabbits, or let's say 9,000 rabbits maximum in this field. If there's more than 9,000 rabbits in this field, it's going to be too many, and they're going to start dying off because there's not enough space for them, there's not enough food for them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, you would put that number at the top. That's exactly what goes there, is how much the environment can carry, 9,000. That's how these equations work. Math models real life, right? So um, that's that. Next, what is the growth rate? Well, that's you can you know where the growth rate is, right? It's right here. The R is always right there. It's negative point three three three, and we don't care about the negative. It's just thirty three. You know, move the decimal two places. Thirty three point three percent. There it is. Is that good? The rate is always next to time, huh? Remember, per. P, E to the R, T, the rate is always next to time. Same thing here. The rate is right there next to time. Good there. It's nothing, no so big surprise there. They're just having you look, get used to looking at a logistic growth model and what it might do. Uh, next, determine the initial population size. Initial population size. Hmm, how can I do that? Let me write the formula here. So this is P of T equals 9,000, the carrying capacity, the maximum it can carry, over 1 plus 31, yeah, 31.46 e to the minus 0.333t. Okay, so in other words, that's the amount of population at any time t. Does that make sense? I plug in a time, I can figure out how the population is doing at that time. Okay, so now what are they asking me? Initial population. Initial. What does that what does that mean I plug in for T? T is zero. Right. Is that good? Initial means start, huh? Initial means at time zero. At the start of the process. So initial means time zero. So they're just saying, hey, just stick in a zero there and hit the buttons on your calculator. That makes sense for initial. Initial is always at time zero. So that is 9,000 over 1 plus 31.46 e to the 0. And e to the 0 is just 1. So that's going to come out, I guess that's the 277 number, rounded to the nearest whole number. So that means initially there were 277 rabbits or whatever it is. 277 rabbits in the field at the start of this little experiment. And then it's going to rise and fall over time with predators and space and food and all that. Finally, what is the population after five hours? That would just be plugging in T as five. And I'm, I'm going to move on. We've got, we got many other things to do. So you good with the rest? Uh, part G, E is hard, unfortunately. When will be 7,200 grams? That's letting the P be 7,200 and solving. Yeah, that won't be easy. That will not, maybe I should do one of those. Okay, maybe I, I maybe better do that. So I'm going to do part E. Everybody got this copy down? I'm going to go to a new screen and do part E with you. This is 8E. So 8E, I better do that one. So the, it's P of T equals 9,000. So it's P equals 9,000 over 1 plus, what is it? 31.46 E to the minus 0.333T. Like that. So everybody got all that copy down? Is that okay? So I'm going to do part E now because part E is pretty hard. D is the same. D is the same as you C. Just plug in T equals 5. Hit the buttons in the calculator. But E is harder. They're saying when will the population be 7,200? So when will the P be 7,200? Right? Yeah. So, so, so basically you put 7,200 right there. So, so I'm just going to put that in right there. So 7,200 equals that. So I need to solve that equation for T. That's not very easy. That's tough. How are we going to do that? 
How are we going to solve that for t? What I would suggest first off is put this over 1 and go diagonal, diagonal, cross, multiply. This is a little different, isn't it? This one's a little different than the PERT. It's a little more complex, the logistic growth model. So I want to show you one of these. So you get 7,200 times 1 plus 31.46 e to the minus 0.333 t equals 1 times 9,000. Like that. Good to there. And then I'll distribute, distribute. So 7,200 times 1 is 7,200. 7,200 times that other number is, what am I getting, 226512T. And that's 1 times 9,000 is 9,000. We Good so far. So I cross, I put the 7,200 over 1 and diagonal, diagonal, cross multiply. Then I distributed the 7,200 times 1 and times 31.46. And now I'm trying to solve for t. So next, I'm going to subtract the 7,200 from both sides. I'm going to get 226512e to the minus 0.333t equals 1,800. Now I'll divide. This is a mess, huh? I feel like I've said that a few times now. Over 226.512. Boom, boom. And we get e to the minus 0.333t equals 1,800 over 226.512. comma 512. What should we do now to solve for t? Ln, because t's in power. Can I, can I go dot, dot, dot for the rest? So now it's ln, ln, the power comes down, you're out of the woods, the rest is normal. But it was kind of weird. I wanted to show you at the beginning, it was kind of weird, you know, cross multiply and distribute and all that, a little different than we're used to. The rest is normal, dot, 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 like the other ones we solved. It's that beginning piece through a Yeah, the beginning piece is a little weird. Is that okay? And I'm going to end this section then, unless you have some other questions.